What's up? This is Alex, the guy who makes orchestral tutorials for people who make music by ear. If you want to learn more about this stuff, subscribe to this channel because there's a hundred videos on it on this subject. Today I want to talk about one question I'm often asked, which is, what is the best sample library for me? Should I get an expensive one? Should I get a mid-range one? Or should I maybe go and get a free one? Are free sample libraries even good? I want to reply to those questions by making a comparison of something like seven different libraries in terms of like how they sound out of the box for orchestral music. Some of those are free, some of those are mid-range, some of those are expensive. We're gonna see how they sound like based on this arrangement, this orchestration I wrote on top of my trailer percussion from the tutorial I made last week. Basically, this orchestration sounds absolutely basic, stupid. It's not processed. It's not that much developed because I wanted to show you how these libraries sound on an entry level. So if you're a beginner, you will get this sound. But obviously, obviously, if you're an expert, you can dive deeper, make your orchestration much better, and get a sound which is far better than this. But this is the example we're gonna listen to. So yeah, that's basically like trailer shenanigans, whatever. It's not that mind blowing. If I actually wanted to make an effort on this, it would sound two or three times better. But again, I want to show you how they sound out of the box on the entry level, no processing, just the raw sound plus reverb and a bit of mastering. So I'm gonna start from the free libraries. Now, I made a video in the past about why you should use paid libraries instead of free libraries, where I compared a paid library with something called Sonatina, which is a free library developed by uh, a guy, I think. And uh, in my opinion, it didn't sound very good. And some of the people who disagreed with me told me, you should try VSCO, which is new and sounds much better than Sonatina. It's going to blow you away. So that's what I did here. I tried VSCO. So we're going to listen to the orchestration that I showed you now without the trailer percussion by only using VSCO. By the way, if you want to learn more about how I wrote the trailer percussion and sound effects, uh, I'm going to leave the tutorial for that down below in the description. But this is how VSCO sounds like. Now, I don't want to downplay the work they did on this library at all. Like, it must be freaking insane to work on such a project and make it for free. So, total respect to the guy who made it. However, a reality check. You cannot write music with this sort of kind of software and expect to have the music actually sold in you know, a relatively free website or used in trailers. Like, if I show you how it sounds like in the context of the arrangement... What is that? Like, if I remove it... It actually sounds better without the, the, the you know, the, the orchestra, which, you know, to have such a cheap sound, it takes down the whole quality of the arrangement. Like if you use a rotten ingredient to cook pizza, you're going to be sick, no matter how good the other ingredients are. Okay. I'm not saying this is a bad sample library, but if you want to write actual professional music, you will never be able to do that with this. If you're writing for an indie game where everything is like retro, etc., this will get you into the retro vibe. So in that case, maybe you might want to exactly use a sample library like this because it sounds retro. But if you're aiming at becoming the next Hans Zimmer or the big trailer composer you want to be, don't fool yourself by using libraries like this. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't use libraries for free. There's some libraries which are freebies from actual developers of sample libraries from, you know, performance samples and stuff like that, which are maybe one patch out of a complete professional library or a demo patch, you know, something like that. Here we have Palette Primary Colors and Angry Brass from performance samples, and they sound like this. <laughs>
I really like how the uh, palette primary color strings sound like in sustain. You could totally write like songs by using lots of sustain strings, like emotional music. There's another library called Spitfire Lab Soft Piano, which is like this emotional piano for free. And if you use soft piano plus these sustain strings to write emotional tracks, you could totally write something that sounds believable, that will get you sales on Audio Jungle if you write it decently, obviously, by doing like lots of humanization and stuff like that. Uh, the quality is there. It's, this is just the, the entry sound. You can dive deeper, obviously. This is true for every library I'm going to show you. And if you dive deeper with this and soft piano, I think you can get a freaking great result for making emotional music, which can be sold and get to lose of listens on YouTube. I'm not a huge fan of this, the staccato. They're not very short and they're kind of loose, so they're not very impactful. As for the angry brass, Sounds pretty cool for Marcato, so uh, that's not too bad. Um, so again, this is completely free. There's many other freebies from professional developers, which I'm gonna leave in the description of this video down below. Check them out there if you want to get a head start with free stuff. The next library only costs $30 per month, being an actual affordable price for a full-on professional orchestra library that has everything that you need to write orchestral music and more. It's called Hollywood Orchestra, and you can get it for 30 bucks per, per month, by going to the Composer Cloud section of the East-West website. Hollywood Orchestra sounds like this. So at the end here, you just notice one of the downsides of this software is that it's based on a sampler called Play, this one, that is actually very badly optimized when you compare it with Contact. So this sampler is known for being quite bad. This is software is less play. But again, this is just $30 per month, so I can excuse that. But uh, the problem with this one is that it sounds quite flat. Compared to the next libraries you're gonna hear, this sounds quite flat flat, especially here, it's quite dynamic, to be honest, probably more than other libraries, but it doesn't sound so aggressive or so strong, so bold, so fat, you know, so you have to really compensate with very well done orchestration and very well processed mixing and stuff like that. If you don't do that, this library is going to sound weak and everything you write with it is going to sound weak. So that's the downside. But again, if you are a beginner and you don't have money, you can pay $30 and access to this whole orchestral suit, plus all the other East-West instruments. I'm talking about terabytes of instruments, which are professional. Just know it's gonna cost a bit to your CPU and you're gonna have to write specifically to conserve or to not spend so much CPU um, over this badly optimized software. But anyway, let's move on. This is Nucleus from Audio Imperia. It's a new sample library that contains all the uh, absolute basic orchestral instruments like brass, um, woodwinds, strings, even choir. There's both ensemble patches and also split patches. And obviously composing with split patches like violas, first violins, cellos, bass trombone, tubas, whatever, is better normally than composing with string ensemble, brass ensemble, and stuff. Here though, I did everything with ensembles, again, because I wanted to give you how this sounds like for a beginner who just got it, okay? This is what they sound like. Now for this one, what I'm not a fan of is the choir, because uh, just, you know, when you hear the spiccatos, they don't really sound convincing to me. That's the only thing I don't like. All the rest is amazing, in my opinion. Also because, again, I've wrote this very lazily. This is the entry sound you get. If you want to dive deeper, you can, because Nucleus both comes with ensembles, but also split patches, you know, and also each patch has two versions. You can have the modern mix or the classic mix, mix, which sounds more dynamic and more quiet and stuff. So, you know, you get a bit of everything. The only thing this library doesn't seem to have, I think, is mic positions. 
but it's not a huge problem if you you, know, you use it as a sketching tool or if you use it as a beginner. But honestly, honestly, I thought this library was just a sketching tool and I used it initially just for that. And then I noticed, wow, when I sketch with this one, the sketches themselves sound quite convincing already, you know? So it's weird. Like it sounds so good and it's so easy to use like a sketching tool, but it sounds better than any other sketching tool that I know. And you can also, if you want, delve deeper and make it sound actually like a proper full library because it's also that. So this is my favorite of all of the, these libraries I'm going to show you today. But there's more. I want to show you also Jaeger and Metropolis Arc 1. But what I like to do and what I did here in the first version of this, the official version, is I used a few libraries combined. So I used Nucleus for the brass and strings and for the choir I used Oceania. And that ultimately is what you want to do. Like you want to have sample libraries that are good for something different, you know. So, okay, I like Nucleus and String and the Brass, but the Choir sucks. What I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to buy a Choir library that is very good at that only, Oceania. So I match them, and by using them together, two different kind of strengths join together, and now I get the best result. So that's the ultimate thing you want. But if I had to recommend something to start to con that contains everything, Nucleus. Let's check out how Jaeger sounds. <laughs> So Jaeger sounds pretty good too. It sounds much more dry than Nucleus does. Obviously, you can process this and make it sound bigger yourself. But again, what I like to have is a tool that just out of the box sounds so mind-blowing that inspires me to actually write loads of music and makes me feel good about what I'm writing. Uh, with Jaeger, you have this kind of dry sound that not it's not necessarily super epic. Uh, the good thing about Jaeger are other things, in my opinion, like the vocal patches or the trailer sound effect patches or the fact that with Jaeger, you can actually do some sound design inside the patches themselves by adding effects and stuff. So it's kind of interesting as a library to use. But if I had to sketch, I probably wouldn't use that one. I still use Nucleus. The last one I want to show you is Metropolis Arc 1. So if you know me, you know I've been using Arc 1 for most of my tracks and I still use it to this day. In my mind, it's one of my favorite libraries, along with Arc 3 now. They sound freaking insane, but that's also their biggest point of weakness. They sound insane. So if you want to write something like dynamic, like the passage at the end on the outro, you notice it always stays on the high, you know, it's like the dynamics are always high because you don't have piano, mezzo piano, it's just forte to fortissimissimissimo in terms of dynamics. So if I do sort of low dynamics, it's like I'm screaming in the distance rather than singing softly, okay? This is what you get. And also like the other problem of Arc 1 is that as for the low strings patch, you only have octaved spiccatos. So this, D3, is D3 and D4 at the same time. So if I write chords, it's not like I'm writing two two voices. I'm actually writing four voices. So it can, the sound is kind of like kind of muddy or kind of like, you know, dispersive because you have both double basses and cellos. You don't have it like don't have like only basses or only cellos. While for the high strings, you can do piccatos and sustains that only use one octave. Is D5, is a D5, is a D4. It's not an octave. So for the high strings, it sounds much more precise. On the low strings, yeah, the kind of, this kind of muffled sound, which is not necessarily a bad thing again, because if you want something that sounds super loud and stuff, obviously you pff, just write one note, it's going to sound mind blowing. But when you write something more complex, you want to be wary of what you're doing with some of the patches of Arquan because they just sound insane. As for the brass, Arquan's brass is still one of my favorites. Sounds pretty insane. And also the brass is like split. So you have bass trombones, French horns, tubas, trumpets. The choir is actually pretty good too.
Honestly, if I didn't have Oceania, I would still use this a lot. In my first few tracks, I used a lot of Metropolis Star One Choir, and they sounded so good because of that. But Oceania made, like, took the place of this one because Oceania, in my opinion, is so flexible. It understands on its own which notes are short, so which notes they should do staccatos on, or which notes they should do marcatos, which ones should be sustains. It's super flexible, it's super intelligent, and it sounds insane. Arc 1 is still sounds insane, but you also need to use articulations and stuff. But yeah, the final version, which is the one I kept uh, for this sketch, is Nucleus plus Oceania, and without all the trailer percussion, it sounds insane. <laughs> So that's it. Now, which one I recommend out of these? I would totally recommend you to go on the sample library website and check out the sample library demos, the, like the tracks that were written with the track with the, the library, and also check out the manual because it includes the list of instruments, the list of articulations included in the instruments. For example, Nucleus is amazing for sketching, and uh, in some regards, it's superior superior to Metropolis Arc One, which is much more expensive. But once one thing I didn't say and didn't show in this example is that Metropolis Arc One gives you way more articulations than Nucleus does. You know, way more. So if you're actually out to write something a bit more complex, it would make sense to use Arc 1 compared to like Nucleus because you have way more uh, ways to play with your instruments and stuff. And also you have mic positions in Arc 1, which you don't have in Nucleus. But still, I prefer to use Nucleus nowadays because it's much easier to sketch stuff for me and not all the, tra all the tracks I write are necessarily complex. So it's very, it's not that easy of a subject to think, which one should I get, you know, because there's so much that goes into this choice. You need to ask yourself, what kind of music specifically do you want to write? For what format? What emotions do you want to convey? Do you want to write horror music? Then, okay, for horror music, you're going to have better luck by using libraries that have weird articulations like clusters and stuff. And Metropolis Arc 3 comes to mind. But if you want to write like basic symphonic orchestral music with like sustains and staccatos and that's it, then Metropolis Arc 3 is not going to be good. Arc 1 is going to be good, but maybe Nucleus is going to be better. But if you want to learn how this kind of sound like out of the box with no processing, this is what I just showed you. I'm going to leave timestamps in the comments so you can skip to each different example and here with your ears again what the differences are that's it for this video i hope you learned something new again if you want to learn about the trader side of this arrangement i'm gonna leave the tutorial down below in the description and subscribe for more of this stuff and then hit the notification bell because i don't post that often and sometimes when i post unless you hit the bell you're not going to be notified about that so if you want to keep on the knowledge hit that bell and i'm gonna see you in the next video